she fancies her chances as as leader at some point and sees herself as the kind of um, uh, flag bearer for the right. There was no rest uh, for the Prime Minister, no end to the turmoil in his own party, because the final part of the year, it's fair to say, was pretty much dominated uh, in the Conservative Party by the ever-controversial Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, uh, in an article, then the Home Secretary, in an article in The Times now in November, uh, Suella Braverman accused the Metropolitan Police of double standards and playing favourites uh, when it allowed a pro-Palestinian protest to go ahead in London. Within days, she was sacked from the government by the Prime Minister. What do we know now about Suella Braverman and her political ambitions, Kat? Well, I suppose we probably know the same as we did uh, this time last year, which is that she fancies her chances as as leader at some point and sees herself as the kind of um, uh, flag bearer for the right. Um, but she has got some competition on that front. And of course, not long after she was sacked, um, Robert Jenrick, her junior minister, the immigration minister, uh, junior home office minister, resigned um, over the Rwanda legislation, the, the same legislation that has sort of caused such a, a lot of uh, controversy within the party. Um, he resigned over that saying it wouldn't work. And um, and he now may also be uh, seen as actually a sort of a more persuasive standard bearer for the right, because um, it wasn't just the immigration issue that sort of led to Swella Braverman's sacking. I think actually um, her comments around homelessness being a lifestyle choice um, upset an awful lot of her party colleagues. And um, and she obviously has this uh, sort of longstanding flirtation with the right or, or sort of, you know, her, her sort of rhetoric around uh, invasion and hurricane of immigrants um, does sort of... Uh, alarm and concern quite a few people even if they feel that perhaps um the immigration needs to be tighter they don't um necessarily like the way that she goes about it so so well braverman actually quite divisive and and doesn't really have the biggest um base within the party uh robert jenrick who again i think most people would have until fairly recently considered to be a sort of moderate uh, conservative MP now seems to be sort of fairly firmly embedded with with uh, those further on the right of the party and 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 you know could perhaps bring uh, several people along as, as part of his base it also um, it also strikes me that as you say they're both seen as potential future leaders of the party and therefore potential future prime ministers yet frankly neither of them Braverman nor uh, Jenrick have a record of any considerable achievement when they have been in office? Uh, no, but I mean, I think this is kind of the, the issue, really, that um, the Conservatives, have, well, that has kind of been the overlaying theme for, for the party over this year, which is that they're sort of conducting a live autopsy um, on on the, the party before it's even died. Um, so you've got multiple potential leader candidates, um, Kemi Badnock, obviously another one, James Cleverly, who up until he became Home Secretary following Swella Bradman's sacking, um, was sort of regularly uh, top or near the top of the um, uh, Conservative Home uh, League rating for ministers, seen as sort of, you know, doing quite a good job when he was Foreign Secretary, out and about. And since uh, taking on the sort of poison chalice that is the Home Office has uh, plummeted quite considerably and I suspect may may go further down. Um, but, you know, there are there are multiple people who fancy their chances. I mean, I think probably it's not controversial uh, to say that the expectation is that the Conservatives will lose the general election. Rishi Sunak unlikely to stick around and therefore there will be a vacancy. It is probably going to be leader of the opposition. And the question is, will it be five years, 10 years or I suppose even 15 years? And very much it will de determine the, the amount of time that they are in opposition will probably be determined by which leader they pick. Well, of course, uh, Brubman's departure led to a cabinet reshuffle, and we've already had uh, that reshuffle nominated as one of the moments of the year because it brought back someone who had been there and done that and therefore perhaps is not a threat to Rishi Sunak's leadership, but none other than David Cameron's shock return to government. And you know that it's a big day when you're getting messages from people who 
uh, don't sort of live and work in politics. And and I, I got a message from my mum saying, what's David Cameron doing? And um, yeah, I think that's kind of one of those moments when you kind of think, right, OK, it's definitely crossed over into into the sort of wider world. Um, it's I mean, it was obviously a sort of big choice. We know that there were some discussions, um, um, you know, reportedly involving William Haig, um, amongst others. Um, and and David Cameron is seen as a statesman, um, even though he is sort of divisive in so far as certainly some of the sort of Brexiteers and, and Red Wall MPs um, do not uh, like his return and feel that his return is a symptom of um, uh, Rishi Sunak's or a symbol of Rishi Sunak's plan to sort of steer the Conservative Party away from the type of policies that they would like to see. Uh, although we haven't actually seen much sign of that so far because he seemed pretty intent on this uh, Rwanda policy. Um, but the other question that I think it posed is, what does it say about Rishi Sunak uh, and his view of the party? Because he um, has several MPs that he could have chosen from and he did not. He even has several peers, existing peers that he could have chosen from and he did not. He he brought in someone, had to enable them sort of effectively over, overnight in order to make him uh, a member of the government. And I think that... Um, also caused a bit of bad blood amongst some people who perhaps thought that they might be getting that job. The other thought, of course, is that, um, to your point earlier about the sort of lack of achievements or the lack of experience from many of the uh, sort of leadership hopefuls, David Cameron is seen as a, as a statesman-like figure, regardless of your views of his effectiveness or, 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 or abilities. He speaks very well. He's able to conduct himself in interviews very well. You know, when he's uh, sort of at the dispatch box, he's going to sort of be able to sort of rebuff any difficult questions pretty much at ease because he's been doing it for so long and so having him uh sort of showing his his uh sort of expertise in that area and also i'd love to be a sort of fly on the wall uh in the cabinet meetings because having him sitting around the table with the prime minister um david cameron of course sort of managed several of those people they may have been aides for him or junior ministers working underneath him and and, and all of a sudden uh he's back and although the prime minister is Rishi Sunak, I suspect there will be a lot of people who struggle to kind of believe that Rishi Sunak is the ultimate authority around that table. Kat, um, just quickly, have we asked you for your political moment and personality of the year? Uh, yes, we did this on Monday, actually. And I think um, I think probably the political moment has to be Robert Jenrick's resignation. Um, because it was quite surprising and it did feel for a moment as though it could sort of spiral into something worse. And I think we haven't quite seen the end of that. I think it could continue to spiral out. So I, I, I have a different uh, moment today to the one that I gave earlier the week.